Shout out to Abba and Preach because they made a video response to this video or video reaction to this video. And I had to stop watching it because I was like, I gotta watch this with my stream. This looks too good. And there's something that specifically even Abba and Preach noticed when they were watching it that I think we're gonna notice here. But watch the way this man walks into the room. Go ahead and bring out our next single guy. Hello, welcome. <laughs> I'll have you hold this. All right, if we can have your name. Uh, my name is Aaron. Aaron, how old yes, are you? Yeah, I'm 29. 29, okay, yes. and what do you do? Uh, I'm a licensed plumber. Oh, okay. very cool. Yes. And now, what do you look for in a woman? Um, I look like, I look for a woman that's not promiscuous and um, has a career going for herself. Okay. Yes, ma'am. And now, what are some of your... Okay, hold on. So right away, what are we seeing? Okay, so right away, first of all, great profession. He's good looking enough, groomed, okay? And yet, and yet, as a girly myself who be lifting them weights, as a girly myself that loves gym bros, his particular categorization of muscles, well-groomed, and trade gives off, gives off toxic. Why? Why do some men who are plumbers, who go to the gym, who are well-groomed, give off, oh, attractive, safe, provider, lovely, you know, loves dogs, loves cats, takes care of children, but his vibes, his vibes not giving that. He has the same, same thing, same thing as the other guys, but his personality already, girl, there's something. Already, you guys are saying weird vibes. Why is he giving Mike Tyson vibes? Man needs to chill. See, man needs to chill. Why does he seem uptight? You know, his smile's unsettling. The vibes are off. Bro got a little too excited walking in. I don't like him already. Yes. Why? Why do you, why do we see it already and it hasn't even been a second? Mickey says it's in his eyes. Farmer Ro Ro Roxas says insecure and entitlement as well. Mm. Mm. Alice, perfect. He seems like a, I'm a good guy, I promise. Exactly. He seems like the kind of guy that gets offended very quickly. Yes, Amanda says, uh, looks like he's walking up to a buffet. Looks like he's walking up to a buffet. Conrad says he is looming and seems like he's on the hunt. He leans in when he smiles. A 100. Abba and Preach clocked it right away too. Hello, welcome. <laughs> Oh, have you hold this? Just man, you see the way he the way he walked. <laughs> He's got some early Mike Tyson energy. You know when women just assume you got bad intentions? This is the face they talk yes. about. This is the face that they be seeing when they're walking down the street. They're like, oh, I know he's creeping. This is why they be defensive, because if a motherfucker warns you. You he's not here to ask you for directions. No. You know I'm an old geezer because I look at this man and I'm like, ooh, this man is up to no good. Yeah, 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 let's go. Even the men knew, the men who knew knew, the women who know know. All right, if we can have your- So if they pop the balloon, that means they're not interested. Your name and age and why you popped your balloon. Hi, my name is Karma, I'm 24. Okay. Oh, sorry, I'm supposed to say the pop in the balloon property. <laughs> Got you. Um, for me, it just did not work. I didn't feel like I had chemistry or wasn't fully attracted to you. And I feel like that counts if we are going to be going through a dating show, you know? Yes, the feeling is definitely mutual. So uh, that's okay. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. You did me a favor. You know, absolutely. Yeah. I'm glad you have a great Thank day. Thank you, Queen. You too. Okay. <laughs> well, let's go. So the women get to pick be the choosers. And so she gave her reasoning. I'm not attracted to you. Very reasonable. And he said, Feel, like Felix Mutual, you did me a favor. So he's been a little bitch. So he's a little bitch. Okay. So he's a little bitch is what I'm hearing. That's what I'm getting. Okay. He's a little fucking bitch. Okay. That's what I'm getting. Cool. Love that. Go ahead. All oh. right. We got to pop over here. If we can have your name and age and why you ended First up. of all, she is literally so beautiful. This girl is so sweet. I love her so much. Would 100% date if I wasn't already married. Hi, my name is Tara. I'm 22. Okay. And why did we end up popping our balloon? Um, the comment you made uh, didn't really. I like a more humble person. Not someone that responds so defensive-ish. Yeah, that's really it. Yeah. I, I didn't really necessarily like that's how you responded. That's fine. Hey, I could just, yeah. all I can do is be honest, I mean, you know? yeah, be honest. I be authentic self. To, that's okay. I came to, to, to find a match. Sure. That one match. And that's sure. all, I mean, Queen. I 100% understand. Yes, yeah. ma'am. Sure. Okay. He 
puts everyone on edge. But I did my own personal research on the man. Go ahead, bro. So dude's a, a felon. But then again, you know, it doesn't mean anything. I, I know some people that are felons and... That was him, uh, well, that's him a little bit younger. Yeah, yeah, when he was younger. Yeah. Advertised, he basically set up a Craigslist thing, basically robbed Advertise someone at Garden. Oh, yes. So ended up going to jail for that. Um, but you know, People can't change. Just because you were a felon in the past yeah, doesn't yeah, mean absolutely. you can't grow out of it. Even but more recently, he had an emergency protective order filed against him by another woman who was basically saying this motherfucker's crazy. And so she went to the judge and got an emergency protective order. But see, isn't that what you said the first video? That you said if you see someone like that, I wouldn't be surprised of X, Y, and Z. You said exactly that. And I was, um, she someone that's your type? Um, she all right. You know, mm -hmm. you're not really my type. I don't mean to be disrespectful. No. So who's the type? Who's the type is the question. Who's the type? You know, but if I seen you in public, I wouldn't reach out totally. to Totally. <laughs> Lies. Look, we would all ask this girl out. Nobody in the planet of the earth, this girl not their type. This girl is everybody's type. That's how pretty this girl is. This girl in the white is everybody's type. I just said it. I said what I said. Ain't no way you wouldn't think this girl was pretty. Maybe not your type when you got to know her because everybody's unique when you get to know them. But there ain't no way you wouldn't think this girl was pretty if you saw her at a restaurant. You lying son of a bitch. And we did get a pop balloon over here. Your name and age and why you ended up popping your balloon. I'm Lex and I'm 23. And I popped my balloon because I feel like you could be a tad bit disrespectful. Like how you like i don't know arrogant a little bit yes yeah, for sure just that well voice in my opinion is not arrogant you know she asked me if she would be a good fit for me but you know he doesn't have any humility he's not a nice person he's gonna fucking hit you the moment you open your mouth and he doesn't like it guarantee you this is the energy of somebody who's calm because they're raging inside. I said what I said. I said what I said, in my opinion. Ain't no way this man come into the house and we didn't think you got a problem. All right, now that we opened the can of worms, let's go ahead and talk about part one of watch who the fuck you date. So his name is Aaron. Aaron is my ex. We dated for a few months and it didn't last very long. And let me tell you why. He is like insane it's like he has that little person talking to him in the corner of his shoulder at all times like he's making up constant stories in his head about like that i'm cheating on him that he's got to watch his back that i have guys in my apartment at all times and that i'm cheating while i'm at work when i work in a clinic full of women by the way so um, my mom ends up making dinners for us all the time we're mexican we make huge dinners and the first time he went he met the family and everything was cool but when we left my mom called me and she said, are you okay? And I said, what do you mean? Am I okay? She said, well, I see something in his eye like he wants to hurt you or like he wants to control you. I don't know how to tell you because I don't want you to think that I'm crazy, but I'm just telling you to be careful. You got a fucking problem, bro. He's starting a fight with just his face. That's not a good look for me. That's all, queen. But, queen, uh, thank queen. When he says queen... It feels derogatory. Feels like a slur. I think he's throwing around some slurs. Thank you, you did me a favor as well. Yeah. Oh, you did me a favor as well. He's a bitch. He's mean. He's a mean little bitch. This is what I mean by what I said. It's not what you say, it's how you say it. Yes. You could have rephrased a lot of the things that you have been saying to me as well as the other girls differently. But that's all I have to say. But one thing about me is I'm not going to change who I am. Of course. To fit somebody else's liking. You know, I'm just going to tell it how it is. If you're not it, that's not it. You know, cool. the one that is it, I'm going to let it be known. Okay. You know, for surely, yes. Respectful. Okay. All right. Your name and age and why you ended up popping your balloon? Brianna, 26. My eyes are, are up here, baby. Are you looking at the top? Oh, does he just look down because that's like where his eyes go? And why you ended up popping your balloon? Okay, so he's doing a direct line, a direct line. We got a direct line. Brianna, 26. Oh, he's holding that for a long time. My eyes are, are up here, baby. Are you looking at the tattoo? No, I, I'm, I'm looking at the hair on your arms. <gasps> oh! <laughs> I have not seen this part. This is new. Oh, he said... What did he say? What did he say? You know, 
the women I deal with, they don't have hair on their Don't arms. do too much. Hey, I'm just being honest, Don't do queen. too much. You know, I, I don't like that. That's okay. all I was looking at. You. Okay, for the record, bitch, I got hella... Okay, you can't see because the ring lights, but I, I got hair. Sometimes my husband plays with it, and he's like, wow. And I'm like, I know. Yep. I got hair in my... Too. You know? <laughs> just kidding, I shaved. But no, for real, though, he... That's what I mean. He's insulting... Uh, if he feels he's going to get rejected, he finds something to, he's like negging them. Okay. When he finds something, he doesn't, when he knows he's going to be rejected, watch if one of these girls decided she liked him, he would say something nice. Trying to say if I'm looking at particular body parts, You just parts, wasn't looking at my eyes. What it is. That's no, I was, I was looking at the hair on your Anyways, arms, Anyways, she asked me the question. Yes. Um, yeah, I'm in heels and you ain't tall enough. Okay. Ooh. Don't do too much Well, though. you're not qualified, baby. I, that's so good. that's all good. Let's move on. Let's move on. Okay, so <laughs> we do still have three unpop, but she looking like you gonna pop? Okay, okay, all right. If we can have your oh my god, I love her pink dress. Name and age, and why you ended up popping? My name is Jacqueline. I'm 25. I popped because I have hair on my arms. <laughs> <laughs> hey, just because you got hair on your arms, that's okay though, Queen. You look phenomenal though. Thank you. You know, she ain't Don't fit to my liking. She ain't even fit to my... Hey, excuse me. So they're all a little young and insecure in their own ways, right? Definitely. Like, she's picking a fight because she's insecure and she doesn't want to be told she's ugly. Listen, no one wants to be told they're ugly, but he's rude. Okay? I'm not on his team at all starting off. But also, see what I said? See what I said? Mm. Excuse me, queen. I'm, I'm talking to this woman right here. Oh, uh, Well, I could look anyway. I could look anyway. I could look any way I want to, you know. But yeah, can y'all give her her balloon back though? She don't want it. Yeah, do you want your balloon back, no. Queen? Uh, we're not talking to you, sweetheart. Oh no! Oh my God, I'm gonna. Oh, he's pissing me off, bro. You, you already been. I already let you know. I'm not interested in. You got more hair on your arms than me, baby. But uh, anyways. Okay, so he's saying get your balloon back, but how you feeling, him? Um, I'm not going to get my balloon back. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. No problem. So. We do oh, maybe he is a little. Um, maybe he's a little. You know, maybe he's a little restarted. Maybe he's a little redundant. He seems a little he seems a little bit like TBI. You know, so I'm kind of like, maybe he needs, maybe, maybe we're making fun of somebody who's disabled a little bit. Now I feel bad. Are we doing that? Are we punching down? I can't tell. Do you still, are you saying, look at his face, back, but look at his face. How are you feeling, him? Um, I'm not going to give my balloon back. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. No problem. So. See that smile? He's got that smile. He's got the smile. Look at the smile. Um, I'm not going to give my balloon back. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right, no problem. So, what is that? I kind of feel like I see that in people with the TBI, you know? <laughs> Ingrid said I called it. Well, actually, okay, but it could be though. I'm serious. What if he has a brain injury and we're just making fun of him? He kind of kind of looks like he has one. I'm not going to give my balloon back. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right, no problem. So, we do still have uh Two balloons? Yes. Do we still have two balloons? No. <laughs> okay, let's go over here. I saw you hesitate, that's why I had to ask. So if we can have your name and age and why you ended up popping. My name is Kayla, I'm 23. Um, originally I was not gonna pop my balloon cause I know a lot of them popped it because he was being, I guess, arrogant. Mm -hmm. But to me, I like my man that's not gonna sit in every girl's face and you know, complimenting them, you know? Mm -hmm. So I didn't find that offensive to me, but when they started that what was going on, I'm very like, I'm, I don't want to say I'm argumentative, but I don't want my man to argue back with me because then I feel like it's going to always be a problem. That was the only reason why I popped mm. my balloon because I was just like, dang. Um, but then with me, you kind of got a little bit. Uh, Britt says no one naturally has a neck or traps or arms like that. You guys think he's on T? You think he's got the roid rage? Caddy with me, you a little sassy just a little bit. And since you want to come at everybody over here, I'm going to get at you too. You kind of look like a Ninja Turtle. You're not that cute. You First of all, Ninja Turtles are cute. Look, 
that's the thing. Just like he is only insulting these women because they rejected him, we're only insulting him because he's an asshole. To be honest with you, they all look fine. All of these people are pretty in their own ways. They're all different variations of aesthetic. He would be attractive if he was sweet. If he was a sweet little button, if he was a nice man, we would not think of any, we wouldn't think about it. But he's not a nice man, so we've decided he's ugly. But is he actually ugly? Because Ninja Turtles are cute. You, you need to relax. Uh, you stocky as hell. And I was trying to be okay, respectful, okay. but... Yeah. He's stocky. He kind of does look a little bit, a little bit like a Ninja Turtle, but he also has a little bit of that, um, like an orc a little bit or like a hobbit. He could be on Lord of the Rings maybe, but he kind of looked like a dwarf. But in, in Lord of the Rings, a mythical dwarf, not a medical one, like a mythical one. It's kind of cute though, but he's an ass. He's an ass. Yeah. Like you was, you was really coming out. Like I didn't, I didn't like it. I'm from the South and I can okay. handle like a lot of criticism and stuff like yeah. that, but the way you was coming, you just ain't like you got it all like that. And I guarantee you probably got a roommate at home and it's just not giving. Uh, first of all, having a roommate in this economy is really smart. Don't let anybody trick you into not having a roommate in this economy because you need to live on your own. You need to live smart and frugal. If you need a roommate, you are a saver. You are a saver. You know what's sexy? Humility. You know what's sexy? Saving your money. You know what's sexy? Not spending it on rent to impress somebody. Have a roommate if you need a roommate. Even if it's your parents, as long as you're not taking advantage of anyone, especially your parents. People who take advantage of their parents, disgusting. Leave your parents alone, okay? They didn't really deal with you as a child. But if you need a roommate in this economy, smart. Now, of course, shout out to all my girls and boys and theys that have their own places. I know it's difficult out here, but I get it. Well, let me say this, Queen. I'm a licensed plumber. So, I live, and I, I do real estate on, I live and property management. I live there. Okay, I wouldn't trust either of these people with anything happening in my own life personally, and they know exactly why, and it's because they're on the show yelling at each other. You want your real estate agent to be on the show yelling at each other? No. You want your property manager to be on this show yelling? No. You want your plumber to be out here? No. This is why it's scary to have randos come to your house to fix your stuff, because it could be these people. But also, I'm sure they thrive in their own little bubble. Downtown, so what you I live downtown, <laughs> I stay by myself, queen. You know, and you're not even qualified to be even you dealing with me. You say everybody not qualified. To, you definitely not. I wasn't even looking your way. You and ain't the one my that type. you wanted popped up uh, That's fine. So that, what? That's that totally fine. Okay. But one thing about me, I could pull 100000 out of the bank. Nice. Can you do the same? You better. And now he's... Now he got to go for me. me for 10000 This dude's a fraudster. And you know what? He did the same thing with the ex. One time he was really, really mad at me and threw the text free app because I had his number blocked. He texted me a picture of his bank account, which this is a receipt. His name right there, Aaron. I don't know what pro extra member means. I have no idea what all of this means. Supposedly, this was his balance. So she don't know what this receipt is, but he's basically saying I got money. Folks in the comments saw it. They're like, that's not a bank statement. That's a contractor statement for how much they've spent at Home Depot this year. Get this yeah, you can't do that. You can't do that, though, baby. Yeah, in a real way. You can't do that, though, Queen. All right. If we can have your name and age. Hi, I'm Esther. I'm 23. Okay. And Esther, uh, you still have your balloon unpopped. Why so? Are you done? Oh, yeah. I'm done with the rest of that. Okay. You know. Conrad says mental illness masks his low IQ frequently. Yeah, he probably is just super traumatized. But also, like, shout out to him being a plumber or whatever. That's dope. Like, they really do make good money. And it's a good job. Like, that's a really good job, right? Okay, now we can talk, right? In a real way. Okay. What do you look for? I look What for are you looking for? A, a woman, like I said, that's not going to be promiscuous. A woman that's going to be consistent. A Does he mean promiscuous, like, sleeping with other people? Because, like, that's just called monogamy. A woman that has a career and things going. Oh, he means low body count. What's a low body count in these bubbles? What is that? Like five, ten? Going for herself, because I had the same thing going for myself. Okay. You know, as well. I don't need a woman to uh, give me her money um, or anything. I'm just looking for devotion and some loyalty. That's all. And I am never looking for devotion. I'm not looking for a king or a queen. I'm looking for a teammate and a best friend. I ain't looking for no devotion. But I don't know what that word means in this bubble. And some honesty. Do you believe in God? Oh, certainly. Yes, ma'am. I'm a God-fearing man. I practice monotheism. That's even worse. Red flag, red flag, red flag. You know, I won't tell you what I identify is. Red flag, red flag, red flag, red flag. Religion-wise, but we can get to that at a later date and time, you we know, can. if you choose to uh, leave here with me. Okay. Well, he, he said, coat. My man's in a coat. He's in a teat coat. 
They give you tea and Jesus Christ mixed in together. Maiden says this show is basically rage bait. It's built to create this sort of tension. They probably pick people who will be making good content. People emotionally reactive to rejection, for example. Oh, for sure, 100. Okay. Do you know the Bible says that love is kind? Yes, yeah, certainly. Are you here for love or are you here to just insult I'm, I'm, I'm trying to create a family, you know. Okay. That's what I aspire to do. Okay. Imagine this is your daddy. Man, those kids going to need therapy. Okay. Yes, ma'am. All right. See, she seems too sweet. You can't date a man like this. You're too sweet. You're good? Sure, we're good. Oh, okay. All right. Any questions for her? Miss ma'am, you can't be with him. I just said no. I'm not here to control women's bodies, but she better not pick him. No, not at all. Oh. Do you have any kids? No, I don't. But he actually does have a kid. He just doesn't think it's his. Do you want kids? I do. You How gonna old are give you me again? a son? Huh? How old are you? I'm twenty nine. How old are you? Twenty three. Okay. Is that okay? Yeah, that's perfectly fine. Okay. You okay. know, we might as well get up out of here right now. All right, well let me let me Why would she do this to herself? Why? Why would you do this? She better say no to him before they get in the car. Yeah. Step on over here. Let's step on. Step that way real quick for me. Step that okay. way. Okay. <laughs> All right. So seems like there's a little vibe here. So is it going to be a yes for you for him? God says save souls. So yeah. Oh, and is it a yes for you it's for her? It's going to be a hell yes for okay, me. Okay. We yeah, got a match. Right. <laughs> the host is shook. <laughs> she is shook. She's like, what's happening? She did not. I don't. Ma'am, she is, why is she doing this? Is she just doing, is she gonna change her mind? I hope she changes her mind the moment the cameras go off. All right, let me take this mic and y'all can go on off. <laughs> okay. <Goodness>. All <laughs> the girls are shook. Oh my God, they're literally shook. No, Ari says she thinks she can fix him. All right, everyone, thank you for tuning in on this episode of Pop the Balloon or Find Love. All right, everybody, we're here with the one and only nicknamed Weapon X, but his real name is Aaron. Aaron, go ahead. <laughs> his Instagram is definitely like all roided out. Very handsome is his username on Instagram. We'd love to see it. You're not qualified official, Weapon X. Okay. Introduce yourself to the people, big dog. Go ahead. What's going on, man? It's Mr. You Not Qualified, aka Weapon X. Yes, I'm sir. in that name, and I'm gonna carry the torch. With yes, man. sir. That's what I'm talking Thanks about. Thanks for having me on here. Right. And, and in the midst of you know me falling in love with this promiscuous woman, she's having sexual interactions with other men. Oh, he was cheated on. Oh, trauma is real. That sucks. So. Okay, not everybody who has been cheated on has trauma. Like, I wasn't traumatized because I was cheated on. I was already traumatized before I was cheated on, guys. <laughs> I had parents. Okay, so some people, though, cheating can traumatize you because it's like, what? Cheating did impact my sense of judgment. Like, oh, man, I really picked wrong. Sometimes cheating can feel like an abandonment of the consciousness. Allegedly, according to some rumors on the internet, some people who might be associated with fresh and fit maybe were cheated on in the past. And that's why they kind of dedicate their life to talking about women. Mm. You know, uh, throwing off my pH balance and, you know, your pH balance being affected, that um, affects my mood. Uh, oh, he had a yeast infection? That's crazy. I've had those. I get it. Um, my okay. work ethic at work, a multitude of things that I just don't want inside of my realm. Right. Okay. And so, in a way, you would say that when that promiscuous spirit is in your vicinity, the household can't function. And that's why you can't allow that in your, your space, basically. Is that mm -hmm. what you're saying? Yes, yeah, sir. Because if we look at history, right. you know, there's been women that have conquered kingdoms. Mm -hmm. Oh, he's straight up talking about the Bible. He's straight up talking about the Bible. Their manipulation tactics and with being promiscuous as well. So I don't like that at all. And for woman manifest any interest in another man, and I'm, you know, showing her that I'm interested in her wholeheartedly, then I don't want anything to do with you. Right. right. I have been a promiscuous man myself. And oh. it wasn't until I was able to see the damage that was done oh. to the other individual. Mm. Um, I didn't know anything about empathy whatsoever oh. until 
you know, this particular tra this particular situation transpired. Right. Once I stepped out of the relationship, um, this woman suffered some life changing things, you know, mm. mentally, I would say. Um, she lost her confidence and her self esteem mm. because of that. And now she indulges in relationships with low value men. He's in a really toxic bubble. I hate this bubble. Low value, high value, good person, bad person. Like if you're a low value man, are you just a bad person? But if you're a high value man, are you a good person? See, low value and high value does not mean good or bad to me. But I think people who use those words are good and bad. I didn't grow up in a world where you say things like high value and low value. You say, are you a good person or a bad person? And good people, it's not about having six figures. It's about being kind to your community and being good to your partners and being good to your kids and having values. It's about getting your life together. So when he says it like that, it's a red flag. When he also says, I didn't learn about empathy until later in life, that also feels to me like a, oh. What if you're an adult who then realizes like, oh, I have to learn how to be empathetic because empathy is a tool, right? You have to learn how to really utilize it. You have to understand what it means. A lot of people aren't thinking about it. Like those people we watched yesterday who were stealing wallets and stealing shoes and, and stealing dishes from restaurants. Like they're not being very empathetic because you're not thinking about the owners of the restaurant or the workers who work there. You're not thinking about getting people fired if dishes start going missing on their, like you're not thinking about people. You're just thinking about yourself, which doesn't make you a bad person, but it definitely makes you a bad community member. He just seems very entitled. Honestly, I started caring, even though it's not my fault, um, with, with her proceeding on with her life, her indulging with them, that's not my fault, but I feel like I played a factor in that. Right. right. Stepping out on her. So, um, and also. Mm, so he cheated on her and then it drove her into promiscuity and he realized that being promiscuous was bad, question mark. And it's not his fault what she did, but he contributed, which is true. He sounds like he's been to therapy, funny enough. I wonder if he went to religious therapy, like uh, religious counseling. What I've come to realize is not all women but the promiscuous women, they are like cats, you know? Okay. You could count on one hand, how many times have you seen a cat having sex? Right. But men, we're like dogs. You know, you'll never see a cat. You can leave a cat in the middle of, de of a desert and it'll come back pregnant. Right. And we're like dogs, you know, we'll do it right in front of you. Um, I just, me personally, I would just like to find one person, do it how I like, and I won't seek others. You don't right. seek others. Right. We can leave it at that. Okay. Now, we're going to move from that a little bit. Because I did I did like what you said about empathy. And <laughs> Men are like dogs. They will hump anything. A pillow, your leg, the mailman. And I can talk with you about empathy for hours. Because I feel like um, one thing that I had to learn as I got married was the importance of empathy. And so now on this day and age, for some reason, when we bring empathy up as a talking point, when it comes to relationships, if you as a man start preaching empathy, you're oh. suddenly a simp, you're soft, you, you feminine. But if. Oh, all of these things. OK, so the toxic. Forgive me if I'm wrong. You can call me out if you want, girl. Toxic masculinity slash overlap with black masculinity bubble. They say things like you're acting feminine. So in the other bubbles, you could say, uh, let's just say the white bubble. I don't know what Asians be doing out here, but the white bubble says you're acting like a girl. OK, so I guess like they always say that, like I always hear black people say, oh, you're acting feminine. And I'm like, OK, but they mean it as like an insult, like it's a negative. And oh, you're acting like such a girl. That's like a negative versus I'm in the queer bubble. Hi, welcome to my bubble where gender is a construct. You are asking, acting in your feminine or mascul masculine, and both can be negative or positive. There's healthy masculinity and negative masculinity, toxic masculinity. There's healthy femininity and toxic femininity. And so if you're acting in your feminine, that could be healthy or unhealthy. Which one are you acting in? You're acting in your feminine. Oh, you're soft. All of these things, all toxic. But I'm glad that they're talking about that because empathy is so important. So let's see what they say you try to bring empathy up to women, then all of a sudden it's like, there's a disconnect there on both ends, but people don't seem to realize that the reason why relationships work is because you have to be able to put yourself in the place of your partner mm -hmm. and your partner has to put themselves 
in the place of you and you guys come to that understanding together. And I just don't understand why as men and women, that mm. disconnect is just so vast, if that makes any sense. If, if, if you got anything to say on that, go ahead. Um, I think that disconnect is that way because part of the way the reason is the way the economy is as well. Okay. You know, everything is so expensive. Um, everything is increasing except minimum wage. Okay. Right. And due to that. Okay, our little communist socialist man right here. Okay. The reason, you know, you have at an all time high, you know, women doing OnlyFans, you know, women want to strip. You guys know I'm top uh, 0.1%. Top 1.1%. Guys, the photo shoot I put out, I just put out a second shoot for June. <laughs> Beautiful. Women wanted to do um, all these activities that uh, a man of my stature would not approve of. Right. You know, and. His what stature? What he say? There's a short joke somewhere in here. Hold on. Let me think about it. What they call him? A ninja turtle? I'm just kidding. A man of my stature. A man, sir. Just say values, girl. See how they have to put you, they, themselves above. You know how you have to. This is very un Buddhist of you. You need to understand that everyone's just different. And yes, a relationship that like cheats and abuses its partner, it's shittier than mine. But a relationship that's different from mine is different. My religious brother has a very beautiful relationship with his wife. I love it. It's a great relationship. Definitely not my relationship. I don't want it. My relationship is a beautiful fucking relationship. You might not want it, great. But there's no abuse happening. That's the only judgment I care about. I don't give a fuck what relationship you have as long as there's not abuse and toxicity. I don't give a fuck about anything else. It's valid. But this idea here, I don't even believe in like high standards, low standards. Just standards. Standards are different for everybody. And for me, I don't believe in compromising on values. He inflates himself too high this is the lack of humility the women were pointing out i think um providing more opportunities for women and, and men overall would change that as well um people don't communicate anymore everybody is mm -hmm. like to me out for their own selfish gain right it's like on the show like i said on my story you know it seemed like those women were there for a helpmate and not a soulmate. As soon as we uploaded your video of the Pop the Balloon Arlette's video, um, we got so many people in the comments going, yeah, the last guy, the last guy was on, he's on Instagram going crazy. He's on Instagram doing this. Oh, he said this. Oh, this is going on. And one thing about, you can ask my wife even this. One thing about me is um, when it comes down to this internet stuff, um, I try to stay unbiased. I try not to pick a side until I actually know stuff because I see I'm picking a side. I stand by what I said. This man will hit the fuck out of you if you step out of line. Guaranteed. Or if he won't, he'll do it in words. Ain't no fucking way. This man ain't toxic as fuck. If this man gave toxic vibes through a screen, how is it going to feel if you're in the room with him? Don't fuck with me, bro. Seeing the effects of what happens when you jump to conclusions and you pick a side too fast, mm -hmm. okay. right? Yes. This this okay. is why I said nah, I'm nah, nah, interviewing nah, nah, you today. No, 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 no. You know what I noticed about my Andrew Tate video? Cause it's getting like some more viewers. Listen, let me say this. I've noticed Andrew Tate viewers don't watch enough anime. They're not watching anime because their answers aren't even about the anime in the video. I like literally gave you examples and they literally couldn't even keep up. I was like, girls, you're not watching enough philosophy anime, bro. I could tell. Ooh, White says, how can you judge someone you've never even met? What makes you say that? Wisdom lived experience that's how who watches anime we're adults here oh white blocked bye bye red flag red flag you want to know a red flag adults who don't watch cartoons adults who don't watch an well anime is very specific but people who don't watch cartoons as adults i don't know about that seems suspicious what's done in the dark is gonna come to the light yeah meaning that um, all truths and all lies are going to be exposed at the end of the day they take the little the three minute video clip or the three minute instagram clip and they they sitting there okay but like this interview is not helping him either i saw one lady like oh yeah you must beat men i'm like what <laughs> yeah. i was looking at your comments i'm like at what point did he in he even sound aggressive towards women in the in anything that he said but all of a sudden you a woman beater and they they sitting there going crazy so i'm like you know what 
I got a I got a small platform. It's not a great platform, but God has blessed me with the platform. That's great, bro. And I'll get to the accusations, bro. The next segment's called accusations. Let's go. Now that you're 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 blowing up right now. You're on World Star. You're on all this stuff. Yeah, you and I understand. <laughs> what a thing to trend for. You're already like a fitness guy and all that. So a lot of this viral pressure does hit you. But how do you feel when you got people just making all these random claims stories and, and claims about you yeah. and they don't even know you? Mm -hmm. Um. So at first it was kind of, it was frustrating, you know, because I know the type of man that I am, the individuals around me know what type of man that I am. And, you know, people start to delve deep into what transpired in the past, you mm. know, and I can't escape my past. Right. I can recreate my future. Right. You know, I don't, I don't, they, they, they want to judge on, you know, things that the negative, Everything, anything they can find negative. Nah, nah, Discord said it. The girl said it. The framing of what he was looking for is standard, but the picture he painted with his word choice was not pretty. He talks a game and I don't trust his words. But anything positive that I've done, they don't want to talk about, you know? Mm. So uh, I think, well, you know, Jesus was perfect, right? Right. Mm -hmm. They still talk bad about Jesus. Yep. So they're always going to have something to say about me. Mm -hmm. Let's keep talking. Yep, you know, like keep the, blowing me up, keep mm -hmm. making me bigger. And, um, you know, God willingly, the right person sees me and something, you know, a career takes off. I don't have to plumb anymore. Something. Oh, so this great trade that he was bragging about that makes him money he doesn't want anymore. Mm, this is what I mean. This is what I mean. He wants an easy way out. Are you hoping social media will just work out? Was that the plan? Is that why you became a plumber? Or are you going to be one of those stable plumbers that went into a trade school to make your alleged six figures, which is very possible, so you can be a sturdy and consistent partner? Or no, he's trying to be famous and he's trying to blow up. Does he think he's going to be a brand? Does this guy think he's going to be a social media person? I mean, he could be. He could make it work. But also, that's what I mean. He's not a sweet plumber who genuinely is good at a trade and loves it and like wants to work hard every day. He's a dude who's looking for an easy way fucking out and he wanted the show to make a hoo ha ba ba bub so he could go viral and here we are. I don't care what people got to say. You can think the worst of me. Um, the women out there that are afraid to take a chance with me, you're depriving yourself of an opportunity with a great man. Um, these you women that you see- You're missing out. Raphael right here. He's good with pizza. He knows lots of rats. Hangs out in the sewers, but he knows all the cool spots to hang out in the summer. Michelangelo over here, he knows where it's at. Okay, he's good with fashion, with swords and daggers. Um, God, please bless me, you know, with a platform where I can create opportunities for my people, right. you know? Right. Now, I felt that, and I felt what you said about the Jesus part, because even the Bible says, Jesus said, they hated me before they hated you. Right. Meaning that, um, you're going to walk down paths where there's going to be adversity. There's going to be people that disagree, that dislike what you, what you got to do. And that's, that's regardless of how well you make your character show. Because I even saw your, your Instagram, all the stuff that you was doing for the youth programs in your, in your area and all that. But then you got a random woman that you've never even met before saying like, you look like you a woman beater. And I just, I just told all my friends, shut them a picture. You do look like a woman beater. Why do you look like one? And it's not because you're black, short or stocky. Plenty of black, short, stocky kings out here that we love. He does look like a woman beater. Why does he look that way? Nah, 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 nah. This is where my intuition is telling me something and everybody keeps trying to make me doubt myself and I'm not gonna doubt myself today, girl. Something about this man, a lot of things about this man tell me that he probably gonna lose it one day. Something is here, what is it? It's him getting, okay, he has got a, he's got a couple of things, but everybody saw it. No, 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 because we all felt it. Why did we all feel it though? What's our evidence? Well, he's the evidence, right? Like his stature is the evidence, like the way he holds himself, the way he's talking to people. And the fact that he works with kids makes me nervous. That does not make me happy. Ari says, furthermore, he acts like a woman beater. Yeah, he just, he's got that thing, bro. Myron from Fresh and Fit doesn't come off like a woman beater to me. He's obviously deeply cruel to women. But you know what Myron feels like to me? Myron feels like a man who masturbates while imagining he's beating a woman to death. 
but then prides himself in never hitting a bitch because he thinks he's better than them for not killing them when he knows he can. This guy feels like the guy who would. Why? And why did everyone else feel the same? Cass says, I read in the app and preaches comment that the actual reason he got fired was because his ex-girlfriend came out about him stalking and putting sugar in her car gas tank for ruining her car. Oh, we gonna find that video now. All right, now that we opened the can of worms, let's go ahead and talk about part one of Watch Who the Fuck You Date. So his name is Aaron. Aaron is my ex. We dated for a few months and it didn't last very long. And let me tell you why. Okay, girl. He is like insane it's like he has that little person talking to him in the corner of his shoulder at all times like he's making up constant stories in his head about like that i'm cheating on him that he's got to watch his back that i have guys in my apartment at all times and that i'm cheating while i'm at work when i work in a clinic you know how earlier when we were watching him he had face twitches but it didn't look like tourette's it looked like a little bit of like something Maybe he's reacting to intrusive thoughts. He does seem a little mentally unwell because men like that are not going to admit that they got something going on like that, right? So you never know. So let's take it back to, to the beginning. So again, we met. I lived in Arizona. He lived in New Mexico. And okay. he said, oh, I have a friend that lives in Arizona. I was actually just there. I was like, oh, dang. Well, whenever you're down here again, let's grab dinner or whatever. He's like, all right. He ended up coming and... His plan was to end up moving to Arizona anyway with his friend, right? He ended up at my house so much anyway that I was just kind of like, mm, I mean, you kind of already live here. His clothes was there, everything. So I was like, fuck it, just, you know, that was my mistake. So uh, my mom ends up making dinners for us all the time. We're Mexican. We make huge dinners. And the first time he went, he met the family and everything was cool. But when we left... My mom called me and she said, are you okay? And I said, what do you mean? Am I okay? Ooh. She said, well, I see something in his eye. Like he wants to hurt you or like he wants to control you. I don't know how to tell you because I don't want you. Yes, mommy. That's, yep. My parents probably would have said the same thing. They're like, mm -mm, he got bad vibes, girl. You to think that I'm crazy, but I'm just telling you to be careful and Really think about if this is the guy that you really want to be with. And I was like, well, I mean, it kind of is already in motion. You know, it's already happening. So then my mom invites us over for dinner again. I think it was the next day and we play Loteria. And um, I guess he was just like, no, I don't want to go. Like he he started little by little, kind of not, not like not wanting to be around my family. And I don't know if he noticed that my family didn't really like approve of him mm. or whatever. I'm not too sure, but anyways, that was a red flag number one. It's kind of like he was already trying to distant me from my own family, you know, like the only protection. They lasted a few months. So this whole story working up isn't even a few months. That I have had is from my family and he was trying to move me away. So when I first started talking to him, I was talking to other people as in I had a lot of guy friends. And I don't hang out with too many girls because sometimes it can get overwhelming and a lot of drama can start. So they would still text my phone. And um, of course, I talk to some. Some internalized misogyny happening here. But I get what they're saying. If they're in toxic groups of people, I understand this bubble as well. Like, but even saying that out loud, like, I don't hang out with girls because the drama. That's because the girls you're hanging out with are toxic, girl. You know how I always say it takes two people to have a toxic relationship? I do think you can have a toxic friend and not be toxic, but I do think you have to keep a note if you have toxic groups of friends. Like, I don't have groups of friends that are toxic because that was my early 20s. I didn't like that. I have friends that are going through things and they have moments of toxicity, but everybody does, right? But I don't have toxic group of friends. If you have toxic women around me, around yourself all the time, that's because you're picking toxic women. Women aren't inherently dramatic or toxic. Just toxic people are toxic, you know? Somebody else before I met him too, it kind of just ended up, going in the direction with Aaron. And so they would text my phone and he would check my phone every few hours. Every time a vibration would go off, every time I'd get a notification, he's looking at me like he wants to like 
literally do something to me. I don't know what was going on. It's just that look in his eyes. Damn. And you guys know because you have seen that look in the pop, the balloon game. Like this video that went viral. So um, he starts checking my phone every few hours. He starts to track my location. I gave him my location on my phone because I was like, I have nothing to hide. Right. And I'm always either at work with him at home. That's interesting. How quickly would you give someone your location if you're dating them or if you're friends with them? I always give my locations to everybody eventually. Like my husband has my location on him. My sister has it. My other brother has it. My Mark has it. So two of my brothers, no, three of my brothers have my location and my partner has my location and then my sister. How many people in your life have your location? I always do give my partners, like we have each other's locations, obviously, because it helps. Also, shout out to all the angry boys who keep coming back to yell at me in my own comments. I appreciate I appreciate you interacting with my stuff. Yes, I see you guys. You guys are talking about how I keep blocking people. Guys, I'm getting popular. I am planning to grow my audience. So just thank you to my core audience who's been here. I am going to get bigger, girl. This is the year. And just for the record, that means a lot of losers are going to end up in my chat because they're going to be pissed. Okay? So everybody get ready. Or with my family. So go ahead and go to part two. Oh, yes, ma'am. All right. Welcome back to part two of Watch Who You Date. We're talking about Aaron, the guy that went viral on Pop the Balloon Game. Thank you. So anyways, he starts to distance me from my family. He starts to track me. I give him my location because I had nothing to hide. Every time I would walk by the window, my, my location would show that I was outside. So he Hold up, Gabriel. Thank you. Welcome to memberships. I appreciate you. I just put out a behind the scenes video if you want to check it out. Thank you. Appreciate you. He'd call me like, what are you doing outside? Who are you messing with at work? Why aren't you working? Like that controlling right then he starts doing pop-ups at my job and it got oh. so bad mm -mm. because he would show up in his work truck while he's supposed to be at work mm -mm. at my job mm -mm. that my supervisor had to keep watching me we had to basically like everybody had to walk me to my car after work to make sure that i made it oh, and the girls shit. would text me hey did you make it again it's a clinic full of girls so that was a red flag number two and then she's straight She's obviously straight because Cass said could still cheat with women, to be honest, but or to be fair. But obviously, she's a straight queen, which we appreciate. We love the queer queens here, but I get it. So she's not going to. OK, but cheating's not good either way. Don't do that. But it's funny that in his original interview, he said that he had cheated with somebody and then she became promiscuous, which I'm assuming wasn't this girl or is it this girl? This is this is inappropriate, bro. Let's see. Then one time I walked outside to the cafeteria and he calls me and he's like, how did I know you were outside? So that in my head was like, mm, circles are already turning. I go to my car to see if he put a tracker because he is capable of doing mm -hmm. some shit like that. And I couldn't find anything. And then he pops up at my job like, don't break up with me. Don't do this. Like, I'll Did you see the I'm Alex text messages to his exes being like, don't break up with me. I'm so sorry. Give me closure. Let me talk to you. How do these men literally verbally abuse you, threaten to hurt you, and then beg you back when you break up with them? Mental health is real. Or they just have incredibly cruel belief systems. So it's one or two things, guys. You're either an incredibly cruel person or you're mentally ill and a cruel person. Look, mental health isn't the reason you're a bad person. Your morals are. Mental health can play a role in how you process information. But genuinely, I'm going to be real with you. I don't think mental illness is the reason you're a bad person. I think it's your morals. Change. I thought I was going to catch you doing something. And I was like, how did you know I was outside, right? He said, I put my extra phone. No, no, no. Zoo says that doesn't make sense that she had to get walk to her car to go home to him. She's skipping around in the story. She only dated him for a few months. This is after they broke up. So she had to get walked to her car after they broke up because he kept coming around, right? Phone tracking you in your car and I left it on record because I was expecting to record you doing something as in cheating on me or like messing around in your car. And I was like, I was done. After that, I was completely done. I said, get your stuff, get out of my house and come bring me my key. And he was like, no, I'm going to change whatever i went home he was still there he was like let's try to work it out i was like mm. you know here wait she went home but he was still there like he hadn't moved out question go back and he was like no i'm gonna change whatever i went home he was still there he was like let's try to work it out i was like wait mm. you're right zoo now going back to that question why was she needing to be walked to her car but they lived together so it was more like they used to live together 
or he was going from Arizona to New Mexico. So he was staying at her place and needed to get out. Ooh, this is text. This is toxic and messy already. Why is he even at her place? If they only did it a few months. I know she said that he was doing long distance and he kept moving places. Okay. So this is a little messy of a story. So let's keep, let's see. Mm -hmm. You know, he already lives with me. He moved here. Like That's crazy, girl. Within a few months, you moved in with a hoe? Okay, listen. As a woman who knew she was going to marry her man after a few months, that's not the point. The point is there's a difference between courting and dating somebody and your family knows them and likes them. And this guy who your own mother warned you not to be with and was afraid for your safety. There is a difference. It's not the time. Okay, in my defense, if you're in a toxic, scary situation, four months is too fast. If it's a safe situation and everyone's been vetted, that's different. Marriages work around the world constantly. It's not about the time you know somebody. It's how much of their character you understand. She didn't, she already understood he was a bad character. Her mom already warned her. Oh man. Whatever. And, that, and then it was going, I was going to do it so bad. And then I, he went to go get coffee for me or something from Starbucks. And he was like, something's wrong with your car. And I was like, what do you mean something's wrong with my car? He's like, yeah, it started to act weird. This and the, I was like, this is what I mean when I say it takes two to be in a toxic relationship. This is what I mean. I'm not saying she's less of a victim. So she is a victim of what he did. But you see how he can do so many insane things and she tolerates him being in her space. It takes two to make a toxic relationship. Healthy people would have called the cops, if I'm going to be honest with you. They would have been like, this man is literally at my work. I'm calling the cops. And then they would not have engaged. This is my warning to all of you. Perfectly fine people can be toxic and unhealthy enough to allow this to occur. And again, this doesn't take away in any way the bad things that he did to her. But when you find yourself in this situation, ask yourself, why am I allowing this to keep happening? Because ultimately you being present is the consent not to be hurt, but to be present. Hear me out and I'll say this again a thousand times. You are not ever consenting to being hurt. That is not a thing you can do. You cannot consent to being abused if you do not want it to happen. But you can consent to allowing yourself to be in the presence of someone or something because you're looking for their potential, because you're hoping they'll change, because you convince yourself, stop lying to yourself so you can get away. And I'm saying this as somebody who lived for someone's potential in the past. Don't live for their potential, accept them for who they are. And if it's not what you're looking for, move on. This girl. This girl, I feel for her. Okay, hold on right there. My car, I have a 2019 Dodge Challenger. It's been perfectly nice. fine. I kept up with the oil. I don't understand. All of a sudden you're driving it and something's wrong with it. Go to part three. He was like, yeah, your car's acting funny. I was like, no. At that point, I was like, I already get out of my house. Like, I don't want you here. You ain't paid one bill. Let's you go, put girl. $20 a light one time. He didn't pay no bills? Girl, kick him out, girl. And maybe you spent like $30 on groceries because I was going to cook dinner one time. But my mama always told me, do not allow a man to come into your home and pay any bills because then he's going to feel like he has the right to either stay there uh. or like, oh, I paid the rent. I live here too. But in our reality. Oh, okay. I kind of agree with this actually. Because if he's not on that lease, if they're not a team and he's just staying with her, I actually do agree with this because he's like a guest in the house. I actually do agree with this everything that i that i had gotten was mine and i didn't allow him any part of that okay i agree with this actually yeah 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 so um i was like all right get out whatever he leaves um he still tried to contact me i was like no get out i grabbed my car i went to my mom's house because i didn't want him to try to come back and to try to convince me and um that's what brings to like my mind all the time like you guys tell people and abusive relationships all the time like you need to leave you need to leave thinking that it's easy for these women to leave and it's not like yeah they've they've gotten hurt it's not easy it's very fucking hard even if the guy never hits you or never threatens your life it is still very hard it is always hard it's not about it being easy it's about it being necessary it is never about it being easy it is only ever about it being necessary like life itself no one ever said it was going to be easy but it's necessary or, or whatever but these women are completely head over heels in love with these men so it's not easy to leave so i did what i thought was best so i went to my mom's house right after and he's calling me like dang you're already at somebody else's house you're already cheating on me i was like whatever and on my way to my mom's i start to feel that my car is starting to shake i'm like dang like what is it i took it to two different mechanics that were like it was the spark plugs the ignition coils i fixed that and then I went to another mechanic because it started to shake again. And supposedly it was the same thing. They fixed that again. So I went to a third mechanic and he's like, I think they might have put sugar in your gas tank. But 
I would need to take out the gas tank to make sure. And I was like, no, I don't think he would be capable of doing something Girl, like that. Whatever. That's crazy. So I can find what was wrong with it. At this point, I had moved out already because I was so scared. My mom had let me borrow money because I needed to move out before my lease was up. So he didn't know where I lived. I moved Damn. apartments. So at this point, I went and got a new car. I went to the dealership and I got a new car. I changed my car. And when I asked him, hey, did you ever find out what was wrong with my Challenger? He said, yes, there was sugar in the gas tank. Girl. So this man that claims to be very godly and studies the Bible and, you know, practices this religion, put sugar in my gas tank, tracked my car. I believe it. I believe it from this man. Put a phone to record me in my car. And I would do things like say everything he needed to hear. Like, yeah, I cheated on you. Like, because I was so scared of him being crazy. Like, this guy has a record. You guys don't know that. You guys really need to be careful who you make famous on this app. Oh. I don't want to say anything else because I feel like I already opened up a big can of worms. Oh. If you guys have any questions, I'll, I'll answer them. But I don't want to make this any more part. Oh, we need a part four, please. Thank you. Four of dating the pop the balloon game buff guy. I'm just gonna answer some questions that you guys have been asking in my chat that I haven't had a chance to answer because I actually work a full time job and I'm a mom. That oh. goes with question number one. Did you lose custody of your kids? No. Their dad and I share 50 50 custody. He likes to talk shit because I don't have full custody. Everybody is entitled to their own opinion, but their dad is an active father and I'm an active mother, so we share. Wait, that's good. You're co parenting. Who talks shit? The guy? The Aaron guy? Oh, because, like, I guess he made a retort. Um, going 50 50 with your divorced partner who's co parenting with you is the ideal situation in a divorce with kids. If you're going to get a divorce and have children, co parenting and going 50 50 is the best situation for those kids. We share 50 50 like we should. Number two, he his sign is a cancer. I know you guys have been asking. Number three, I had nothing to do with him losing his job. Just because he scooped really low into a petty level and posted my kids on his TikTok and posted. Crazy. He did what? My phone number on his TikTok oh. after I messaged him saying, do not involve my kids and take it down. He went and posted the video. My side of the story went viral. This guy who works with kids and helps children and he's an upstanding guy. Just a reminder that the interview we were watching before, the interview we were watching before, the guy goes, I don't know why people speak ill on your name. You take care of kids. Like. Oh, but I'm not the only one. I just had the platform to tell my story, but there is at least six other girls with the same exact story. Pourquoi? So I had nothing to do with it. Number four, just because you're going to scoop low, I'm not going to scoop lower. Four of dating the pop the balloon game buff guy. I'm just going to answer some questions that you guys have been Damn. asking. Damn. Hold on. I guess that's it. She said, how did it all start? What were the red flags? So oh, again, girl. it started. The all title of this is I just wanted to save him so bad, but I'm in a better place now. Ooh, girl, that's what it is. You know how they say, oh, men just want to rescue women. Women want to rescue men. We all want to rescue people. Because we want to help people that are hurt. We all want to help people. We all want to like, you know what I'm saying? Like we want to be good to people. So when people are in rough situations and we feel any kind of goodness for them, we live for their potential, which is the problem. Everything was super good. Like it flowed so well. The person that you see online there is not the person that I met. Like he masked it, it so well. I believe He it. must have learned all of these tricks when he was getting his record or something because... He was very manipulative, very controlling. The red flags were him trying to distance from me from my family, me basically paying everything. Um, he was very controlling. He wanted to check my phone every few hours. He wanted to know Crazy. where I was every second of the day. Yeah, yeah. No, wanting to know where you are is not the same thing as like worrying about your safety. Like these are very different things. And I think people need to learn the difference because what sounds like, okay, uh, you, you're dating a person and they go, don't you love me? Because I love you and I just want your location on so I know if anything goes wrong versus, hey, bro, are you going out tonight? You want to put your location on so I know if anything goes wrong, you want to just like hit me up with your location. And then you go, oh, yeah, for sure. And they go, okay, turn it off whenever you're like ready. I just want to make sure for the night. Okay, you good? It's like, or, 
hey, I love you. I know you're going out tonight. I'm a little concerned. You might get too drunk and have too much fun with your boys. Can I have your location in case anything goes wrong? And it's like, yeah, for sure. And then if they're like, no, you don't need it. I'll just keep you posted. You can be like, okay, but like if you're the love of my life, why wouldn't you give me your location? Because you're not the love of my fucking life. When you're just dating somebody, you don't owe them your location. That's the difference. If you're just dating someone, don't give them your location. You don't fucking know them. Give your family your location. But if you're with the love of your life and you're married, why wouldn't you give the love of your life everything? And if there's any part of you that doesn't trust that person, run. Sometimes I'll hear from couples that say like, oh, I love my partner, but I don't trust them around the kids. Or I love my partner, but I don't trust them with money. Oh, I love my partner, but I don't trust them with X. If there's any part of you that doesn't trust this person, that's the red flag. Why are you doubting the person you're with? But a healthy person also know what this, knows the difference between a red flag and like mistaken trauma. Look, when you're traumatized, you might see red flags that aren't there. But a healthy person knows the difference between this is my trauma and this is genuinely bad behavior. That's the difference. You, If you suffer from intrusive thoughts, then you know the difference between your intrusive thought and your real thoughts. Same thing. When you're healthy, you know the difference between a red flag a real red flag, and oh, this is just my bias and prejudice playing a role here, which takes a level of introspection most people don't have. All those men in my comments that I blocked who are like, um, how do you know this, Brittany? Don't you think you're judging? You don't know this man. Girl, don't tell me I don't know no man when I just clocked him. Abbott clocked him, Preach clocked him, we clocked him, everybody clocked him. Don't be mad because his whole aura screams, I beat women. At the end of the day, all these people that want to question women or men or non-binary people when they feel unsafe around people, you need to check yourselves. You need to say to people, if you feel unsafe, you should get out. Whether you're right or wrong, it's better to decide on caution. If you feel unsafe around someone, leave. I don't give a fuck if it's somebody you're related to or something else. If you feel unsafe, be like, you know what it is, dude? I'm just not feeling it right now. I'm gonna leave. Because at the end of the day, worst case, you hurt someone's feelings for five seconds. Worst case, you get killed. Nah. No, worst case, you get tortured and then killed. I'm picking the bear. We're all picking the bear. Because if you get your feelings hurt and you're willing to say your feelings are more important than our safety, that's you telling on yourself. Discord says 100% why would you be with someone you can't if you can't trust them? I think lots of people don't know the difference between trusting people with things you can trust them with and understanding that some people are going through something right now. Like, let's say you're dating somebody you've been married to and they become paralyzed from the neck down. Are you gonna trust them to carry the baby? Probably not, because I don't know if they can carry anything, but that's not about trusting their character. It's not about trusting their character. You're talking about the character of someone. Do we trust the character of somebody? That's what's really important. It's not about trusting people with like, oh, I can't trust my husband, he overspends. Um, That's a bad character flaw. That, that means he's willing to spend over the safety and sanctity of the marriage and your kids or whatever you're responsible for. I don't think people know the differences because society does not give you the tools. So why's my life a mess? Please tell me cause I'm sick of thinking Yeah, I'm sick of reaching out for the truth And living life as a fool Then